Hey people, we're here to look at the ThinkPad T14 Gen 2. So this is um, Intel 11th Gen processor, finally. It's uh, really nice. Intel XE graphics as well. Please do like and subscribe. It um, helps us to keep this channel running. Design-wise, it's very, very, very similar to the old model. So I guess the saying is, don't change what's not broken. Anyway, let's uh, take a look on the inside. So if we um, open the laptop, I think Externally, I think there's only going to be a very few things that can help you to tell the two laptops apart. So one of them is the logo. So the new Gen 2 has a more bluish logo. Additionally, you'll notice that new model on this side has a slightly larger vent than before. It's uh, just um, getting more air into the laptop. Same battery size, though. I think that's going to be a quite an interesting one. Let's take a look at the ports. On the left-hand side, we have um, two USB Type-A ports. These are the Thunderbolt 4 spec, so it's a, a move a step onwards from Thunderbolt 3. Additionally, we have um, two USB Type-A, so one on this side and one on the other side. Really good to see. I think a two is not quite enough for me to not go without a dock, because if you think about it, one is going to be used probably for mouse, and the second one, if you have a USB, then as soon as you want to, let's say, plug in a keyboard, you'll probably need, um, you know, some form of third-party docking. Um, thankfully, there's plenty of those online. The HDMI port is now 2.0 spec. It used to be 1.4 on the last gen model. And the audio jack, good to see. Uh, we've got a micro SD slot as well. On the other side, we have a lock slot followed by Ethernet. Really good to see the Ethernet. I think the main difference between the T14 and T14S is that the T14 has Ethernet is really useful for some people. Um, additionally, so that's the second um, USB Type-A port I've mentioned, optional SD card slot in case you're that way inclined. And of course, um, we've got some SIM slot on the back. Whether you can do 4G on the laptop, it rather depends on the spec you have. Some models support it, some I imagine won't because the antenna might not be there. I think if we think about the chassis, I think T14 Gen 1 we have over here is really similar to the T490 before it. And this is just very similar again. So it's not really changed since that. So that's why I think one hand opening is a little bit of a. But you know, if you're a ThinkPad user, you're probably uh, able to work out how to open the laptop. Once you get it opened, it um, goes all the way back, thankfully. Not totally fully because there's. but nearly. What would you use it at this angle for? Um, on the side, you have a very solid um, lid movement. Um, it feels really robust. Beyond a certain angle, it um, lifts the laptop up a little bit. So you can see, so this is quite like the Dell Attitude design. So it um, props the laptop up a little bit, a little bit more air, but it's probably less feasible on the desk. So if you want it cooled properly, use it on a laptop cooler. I think the hinge, even if you open, close it from one side, it still doesn't feel loose, if that makes sense. It might change um, at some point when you use it, but it feels quite robust. It doesn't feel too loose as soon as I let it go. It settles quite quickly in place. That's quite nice. Let's take a look on the inside. You'll notice the usual um, ThinkPad bezel. So this might look a little bit more dated design, let's say next to uh, X1 Nano or XPS. But I guess the benefit of having a slightly thicker bezel is that servicing it is still relatively simple. I think you simply remove the bezel and um, you can service, replace the screen if needed. It's a little bit easier on that side, just in case somebody damages the screen. And this being a 14 inch laptop, um, dropping it Something similar could always happen, so that's something to think about. Generally speaking, if you damage a laptop, and even if it's within warranty, it's not going to be covered uh, unless you have accidental cover, which um, is quite a premium. Upwards firing speaker, it's quite nice. I think we've got a tiny bit of a dust um, on the inside, but I think it was like this when we opened the box, which was quite um, strange. Thankfully, the keyboard, it just feels so reassuring. I think it's not really changed that much since the T490, so that's really, really grateful for that. You have the same click button. It just feels quite natural if you're that way inclined. The keyboard is probably as decent as you can reasonably have on a portable business laptop. Obviously, when you go for a more bulky workstation laptop or something like the P53, 
it might give you marginally better feel, but this one is um, still really decent. I mean, still, personally, the first thing I do when I dock my you know, laptop is still plug in the external keyboard, but it's really good for when you have to use it. The fingerprint sensor on the inside um, is quite useful. I guess this is probably software, but sometimes it seems accuracy could be a little bit better or slightly faster, but I guess that's um, something that can be improved over time. Some of the manufacturers have also started moving the fingerprint sensor into the power button. Um, thankfully, at the moment, we've got um, these two as two separate things, um, but it's up to you which one you really prefer. I think on Windows, having it separate is still quite useful. On Macs, I guess it's um, something different. This is basically a very, very similar design if you're used to any of the T490, T14. I think the main difference is going to be the performance provided by the 11th Gen 10 nanometer chip. I think that's a big one, and also the XE graphics big uplift there. On paper, at least for this generation, the NVIDIA MX450 graphics looks to be a lot more powerful. We don't have that model at the moment. I'm sure somebody else would look at it. What I'll probably say is if you're thinking of this laptop or the AMD version, is that with Intel version, you can always plug in the external GPU just in case you need to have something that's a lot more powerful in terms of, um, let's say, external graphics. That's possible. On the AMD side, um, these ports are just USB Type-C standard with all the Thunderbolt capabilities. So we've got the 300 nits screen. It's a non-touch. At the moment, I think the screen, some of the options is just not really available just yet. So we grabbed the first one that was available. So when we used the i1 Display Plus to get a sense of what the display is like, we can see that the display was 340 nits, give or take. So it's about over 10% more bright than described. So the sRGB coverage is 56%. Adobe and um, P3 are both around the 40% region. So it's not necessarily the profile panel that we'll do editing on. But um, of course, with this laptop, you can always um, use an external monitor to target very, very color accurate workload externally on that external monitor. So on the T14, um, there will be the i5, i7 available. Generally, it's categorized between the vPro and non vPro versions. I think personally, even the lowest and i5 seems okay. Um, you'll see on screen that, according to our graphics, um, it's um, the i5 versions generally have the 80 Intel XE graphics execution units. Um, we can't see that here, but um, um, usually you have the 80 on the i5, and you've got 96 on the i7. So. I think if you don't do much gaming, I think the i5 is going to give you very decent performance every day. And because it doesn't have that more power-hungry graphics, potentially I think sometimes you see really comparable scores. The M2 storage on this is the PCIe 4, um, X4. Um, so it's up from X3, but in reality, I don't think you'll notice any difference. It's just Lenovo has said the speed is downgraded to PCIe 3, um, X4. So it's not going to be any different before. So XE, um, better Intel CPU, that's really nice. I think for the first time since um, T480, you really have an um, architecture move away from Skylake, so that's really good. Um, arguably, you had six core Comet Lake processors in the T14, but those were really, really low in availability. So in all honesty, yes, you do get back to full cores, but I think each of these cores are going to be more powerful, which is quite nice. Um, I think RAM-wise, as you can see, we've got um, one stick, so that means we've got 16 gig on board, so we've got one slot remaining that can be upgraded. The slider is still quite difficult to use, but it's really good, it's there. Um, same bezel as before. Um, noticeable, but because it's serviceable, I think happy to take this over a non-serviceable um, display. When we played the same part of a clip, controlling for the same audio settings, we've got um, about 72 decibels on the older model as a max audio volume. The newer model is marginally more loud at 75 decibels. I would say that the T14 has some portable speakers. It's not quite carbon nano or yoga level because those usually are core speaker setups but it's a reasonable setup and um, you can always use your external headphones just in case.
just having a quick play with the webcam, so we're um, running firmware in the background, so um, let us know if you actually pick up any background noise from the fan. I'm actually quite curious. Um, and also, this is an open plan office, so I'm just quite curious to if you can see hear my colleague clicking the mouse in the background. Um, but um, overall, the video quality seems um, passable. It's a functional webcam. Probably hoping for something a little bit more exciting, but to be honest, um, this is what we have. Um, as you can see, we've got a light here. It's a um, limited dynamic range. I think in the center of the frame, there's usually a little bit more detail um, than the edge. Um, I think if I move across the frame, to see if you can hear me um, consistently with the audio fullness or if there's any audio lag. Um, you can see the exposure um, adjusting. It's, um, yeah, see there. Um, but yeah, it's a passable webcam. So just to get an idea how the webcam works in a less bright setting, we've closed the window blinds. Um, so just that light. You can see, even being quite close to the light, um, the center of the frame is not quite sharp. And if I move to the edge of the frame, you can really see the drop off there. If I pop into the background, you can really see the image quality deteriorate. I mean, to be honest, it um, shouldn't expect too much from an um, internal webcam at the moment. It's a fixed focus um, webcam. Hopefully, see better webcam in the future. That would be um, that be good. This audio, um, by the way, is um, captured on the laptop. So sometimes it sounds a little bit as if I'm in a tin can, and sometimes there is a slight um, audio lag if I move to the edge of the frame. But otherwise, it's a perfectly passable uh, webcam for Zoom calls. As for the disassembly, take a look at the Lenovo Harbor service menu. I'm not responsible for what you do with your laptop. I think generally, if you um, remove the SIMS tray and um, also six screws on the base cover, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not the most easy to open case, and it's very easy, I think, um, to accidentally clip off the clips. So I think, um, generally speaking, the T14 case is much easier to open. Um, as you can see now, um, the vent is a larger air intake, and this cover is um, filtered. Keep in mind that the smart card has a supporting part um, for this. On the inside, intriguingly, the heat pipe is just a single heat pipe. On some models, I think the AMD model and um, also the model with the optional NVIDIA graphics, it's uh, dual heat pipes. So that one has a little bit better cooling. Um, so I think this is where usually NVIDIA card sits. Um, and um, as for the upgradability side of things, um, you've got one M2 full size slot. So simply undo that. So we've got um, one RAM slot. Um, so you can put up to 32 gig um, stick of RAM into there. So that's quite neat. So onboard RAM is either 16 or 8 gigabyte. That can't be changed. So if you do go for the smaller 8 gigabyte onboard RAM, then that means um, you can only go up to 40 gigabyte. I say 40, but that's quite big still. As for other um, serviceability side, um, you probably won't need to change this for a while, but that's a BIOS battery. It sits quite neatly on the side. The battery is um, reasonably easy to undo. Um, of course, look at the instructions. It's likely that the larger T15 Gen 2 is, has the same motherboard. So if you look at this ribbon, so on those larger models, the ribbon will just be a little bit larger, so the laptop is a little bit extended, but motherboard is largely the same. So that's a speaker, I think. If you want 4G connectivity, do take a look at if the model supports some 4G card. Some of them may not have the antenna, so do take a look at that. Uh, but generally, it's a really familiar um, inside of the laptop. On the i7, I do think that perhaps it would be sensible had it had um, the dual heatsink, because I think um, this laptop, it does have quite a um, aggressive turbo boost at the beginning up to about 64 watts PL1 um, or PL2 for a little while of time. So um, this is the most intriguing part of this design. As for the base cover, it's quite similar to before. Um, not as solid in the build um, as a T14 um, S model, but um, it seems reasonable. I think if you get the S model, that one is a lot easier to open. I think this one, it's almost as if you haven't done it before, it's actually better to probably just take it to an IT shop 
um, it's not the most easy one to do um, in a way that doesn't damage the laptop. I really wish they made it simpler. After about 10 minutes, the T14 Gen 2 settles back down in terms of temperature. Uh, the first few minutes is where the aggressive turbo boost takes place. And in that time, we see surface temperature on the base cover as high as 65 degrees, which is really toasty. Um, it has settled back down. So what's the hot? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Seriously? 60. No, 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 no. That's, that's horrible. That's when you stop having kids. On the top cover, because the chassis design is very similar between the two, you can see the heat exit from the right hand side. That's where it gets quite hot as well. It's um, something not to suggest to touch. On the CPU focus workload, after the TDP settles to about 20 watts on the new model, you can see the temperature is marginally better, but this is only because it's thermal managed. <laughs> Lenovo is known to vary the performance level and thermal management with BIOS updates, so this is just a point in time performance level. Some people will, of course, note that firmware is not a realistic estimation of the workload that will run every day on the laptop. We just wanted to get some less good case scenario um, estimate of how the laptop behaves, if that makes sense. Looking at this Adobe Premiere export, uh, you can see that when we go from Gen 1 to Gen 2, you save quite a substantial amount of time just using the integrated graphics. The benefit of having the eGPU support through Thunderbolt is that you can plug in the external graphics. So if we look at the T14 Gen 1 with the Quadro P2000, which is about six minutes, and then if we compare the same graphic card plugged into a um, T14 Gen 2, then you can see that one is just four and a half minutes. So controlling for the same graphic card, you can see that the T14 Gen 2 is still faster. Keep in mind, this is within the T14 Gen 2's some um, aggressive turbo boost period within the first five minutes. So the real sustained difference will probably be a little bit less. And of course, we've also looked at plugging um, higher and quadru into the T14 Gen 2. As you can see, the time saving is still there from four and a half minutes-ish to just under four minutes, but it's not as significant. And if we plug the same quadro graphics back into a reference desktop, you can see that you're still saving some time. So the T14 Gen 2 is still a little bit CPU limited on that side, but um, it's very admirable performance when you plug the high-end graphics into it. Looking at the Adobe Lightroom export, as you can see also, the T14 Gen 2 is um, faster than the T14 Gen 1. There is some noticeable performance improvement when you plug in the AC, whereas some of the difference is far less pronounced on the T14 Gen 1. We have the Blender CPU test here. As you can see, the G2 saves quite a substantial amount of time on the Gen 1. And when we look at the Blender GPU test, it's a very similar margin of saving in time. Lower is better. On the CPU-focused Cinebench R23, the Gen 2 manages to retain quite a substantial amount of its performance, which is quite impressive, especially if we compare it to the Gen 1, which has some performance deficit when it's running on battery. There is some performance reduction in single core in the R23. However, it's not as pronounced as the last generation product. But keep in mind, this is CPU focused. When you run CPUs plus GPU, expect some more substantial drops. You can see the new model being about 20% less fast when it's on the battery. However, even on battery, its performance is still better than the older T14 Gen 1. The Gen 1 seemed to exhibit some more power deficit on the battery mode. The Gen 2 is about 20% less fast when it's plugged into the battery. However, even on battery, it's still faster than the Gen 1, as you can see here. On the Gen 2, the performance degradation on battery is much less than the last generation product. As you can see, the last generation product loses about 40% performance, whereas the new one retains most of it. It's a quite impressive uh, 10 nanometer technology. Intel XE graphics here is really the star of the show. Keep in mind, both units are comparable in that they have 16 gig onboard single channel memory. In the Geekbench 5 GPU mode, as you can see, there's about 10% um, performance reduction, but then again, the performance is <laughs> nearly double that of before. In the Geekbench 5, there's about 15% performance deficit 
on battery mode. However, this deficit is much smaller than the last gen product, which loses more performance when it's on the battery. Oh wow, the Gen 2 seem to really retain most of the performance in this um, Geekbench 5 single core benchmark. By comparison, the T14 Gen 1, when you unplug it, you get less fast performance. In this benchmark, you can see the Gen 2 still retaining most of the performance when it's um, on the battery mode, and performance across the board is better than the last gen. So the overall difference is just over 20% in pass mark on AC. If we just ignore the disk mark, because I think that's not really the bottleneck as much here, looking at 3D graphics mark, that's where the most significant difference is. You get 2.7 times the performance versus before, uh, give or take. CPU benchmark is also very, very different. It's almost 40% boost, I think. But keep in mind that the T14 Gen 2 does have a very aggressive turbo boost within the first five or six minutes, so that's potentially what has um, affected the score here. In the battery test world, we refresh five web tabs uh, to a 30 seconds interval and um, was simultaneously running a full HD YouTube clip. Um, you can see the newer product um, has about four and a half hour battery life. This is quite a dip over the last gen. The best way to think of it is that despite using a 10 nanometer chip, both the CPU and the GPU are a lot more powerful than before. So if you give it workload, that could drain the power. It absolutely would. The speedometer represents a reasonable boost over before. As you can see, there is some performance deficit when it's on battery, but even on battery, it's still faster than the Gen 1 on AC. As for the battery on the heavier workload, we've had a brief play in the Cinebench scenarios. When we stressed it to 10 minutes, it was quite obvious that the T14 Gen 2 was using more power because of the initial aggressive turbo boost period. However, after this period, when we've extended the runtime to about 30 minutes, the power drain was actually less than the T14 Gen 2. So running Heaven Benchmark on the T14 Gen 1 and Gen 2, uh, it's quite easy to guess which one is which. Um, the one on the right hand side stutters much more, it's um, not smooth, um, whereas on the right hand side, it's a lot closer to 30 frames per second on the Gen 2. So that just shows you how much um, improvement the XE graphics has made. Going from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2 on the 16 gig single channel, you can see the frame going from 11 to 27.6 frames, so big jump. On the Gen 2, if we change the RAM to a do channel 3200 MHz, you can see the performance actually boosts up again. I was really surprised by this. This means that if you plan to do a more GPU intensive stuff, it might be really useful to have the do channel. When we tested the external GPU on the Gen 1 and Gen 2, controlling for the same GPU, you can see that it's about 60 frames per second um, on the Gen 1 and just under 80 frames per second on the Gen 2. They're both a single channel. The score is roughly proportional to the frame rate. For anyone who's interested in the audio latency, it's an um, interesting score here that maybe this is not the one to use for live audio recording, but most of the time it seems reasonably manageable on AC. On Crystal Dismark, you can see quite decent read and write. Of course, Lenovo multi-source is SSD, so your performance may vary. This laptop, in theory, supports PCIe 4x4. Lenovo has said that the real-world experience is probably likely to be same as before, as you can see this screenshot. Looking at the performance in more detail, the T14 Gen 2 seems to have a quite a high PL1 and PL2 rating at maximum of 64 watts. This is just one watt under the charger limit at 65, <laughs> so it's, um, it's quite aggressive. What this means is that within the first five or six minutes, Intel CPU doesn't seem to really aggressively turbo up, as you can see from the top left chart. The CPU temperature quickly reaches some 100 degrees, then it throttles back down. This is when the PL1 gets capped from 64 watts back to about 35, back to 20. So the sustained TDP is really about 20 watts, which is actually lower than the T14 Gen 1. But of course, keep in mind we run Firmark when we capture this score. So it was CPU plus GPU stress at the same time. It could be that with the Gen 2, the laptop has to preserve a little bit more power for the graphics. In the first five or six minutes, the Intel CPU has a really aggressive um, turbo boost up to 64 watts. It get consecutively reduced from then. And of course, if we look at the total system power consumption within the first few minutes, 
you notice that instantaneously it goes to about 80 watts so in that time it's actually draining into the battery it then gets reduced down to about 65 watts exactly in the charger region and then further to just over 50. keep in mind that the t14 gen 1 is managed a lot more flatly so what Lenovo seemed to be letting the T14 Gen 2 do is aggressively turbo boost at the beginning with the understanding that it will go to a lower sustained TDP um, after about six minutes. Look at this second graph. As you can see, the T14 Gen 2 in green seemed to spend more time at under the 19 watts region. Um, than it does over, whereas the T14 Gen 1 seems to spend more time on higher power usage. But of course, the overall performance level on the T14 Gen 2 is higher across the board. What is quite interesting is that the CPU does throttle within the first three minutes of the benchmark. We can probably argue that this really aggressive top boost at the beginning is very much temporary. So just to sum this laptop up. It's just a more performant version of the T14 Gen 1. Not much else has uh, changed, but the performance boost um, provided by the uh, 11th Gen um, processor is actually very substantial, both on the CPU and also on the graphics side. For everything else, it's just a nice, small, incremental improvement. So things like um, getting rid of the TN panel and um, brighter base screen options, 300 nits on the base cover, um, slightly larger vents, and um, Thunderbolt 4, as well as the HDMI 2. So across the board, it's um, better. It doesn't take a genius to work out that not much has changed, that this isn't necessarily something you're going to queue for. It's probably something you get issued at work or something that you use for work. So in that sense, it's a very predictable, very dependable upgrade um, based on the last gen product. So. You know, it's um, the keyboard, I think for me, it's the, among the best um, available currently on a ThinkPad because it, it retains the old ThinkPad from the T14. It's 1.8 millimeter travel, so that's um, better than the X1 Nano, uh, marginally better than the Yoga 9 and um, Titanium Yoga. All those have the slightly thinner keyboard travel. Um, you get a better pricing. Um, it's, um, it's a volume product. It's going to be used by quite a lot. Um, people, so it's a different price point to those more premium products. And thankfully, the M2 is still the standard um, uh, full-size M2, so it's not the miniaturized M2, which has some, which you can only use a single-sided on the more recent ThinkPads. It's a tried and tested chassis. It's an um, evolution of the T490 and the T14 Gen 1. You don't need to fix what's not broken in some ways. Um, of course, you've seen the HP design um, in the other um, setting. They've made their system lighter and thinner. Dell has uh, taken a slightly different approach, I think, with theirs. Their RAM is no longer upgradable. And also, they've split their um, 7 Seldon series and 9 Seldon series latitude up a little bit. So this is just a really dependable system. And um, of course, there's usual, you know, small um, downside of using the same chassis as before. Um, I mean, the most obvious ones will be that um, the heat exhausts from the right hand side. So if you use a mouse, it's going to get onto your hand. Um, if you lift the edge of the laptop, uh, it uses that bit to prop up the um, system. So that's going to leave some marks over time on the edge if you use the laptop at those angles. Um, the front edge is a little bit sharp, but um, you know, we're probably being pedantic and also no one-handed opening. Some of those can be um, obviously resolved by using just an external keyboard and um, um, external mouse, obviously. For me personally, if I had to choose the Intel ThinkPad today that's portable or focused, then it's going to be this one. I think for me, something that has a performance and is more affordable, it's going to be more value than the more premium design, but your mileage may vary. You might prefer a Nano, you might prefer a um, Yoga, which has a touch screen. So everybody's a little bit different. Uh, before we go, I think um, inevitably, the comparison to AMD will be there. Um, the AMD model, I think it was meant to arrive in May. Um, I think there's a global shortage at the moment. Uh, the Intel model has already launched, so we're quite curious to see when the AMD side of the T14 Gen 2 arrives. It's, um, I suspect it's probably going to have quite similar cooling, so 
performance wise, it's probably just going to be better um, single thread than the last gen AMD product. Um, I think with AMD, um, I don't really need to say anymore. It's you probably already made up your mind. But um, I think what I will add is that um, with AMD, these two USB C ports will pretty much just be USB C. On the Intel, it's a Thunderbolt, so you can do the external graphics. So as we've seen here, you can plug in a much more powerful um, external graphics um, to speed up your render or um, to play a big game on the side. Um, so, you know, those uh, Intel capabilities. I think that's all we need to say. It's a really good laptop. Please do like and subscribe so that way we can do more of this um, content. All right, cheers, bye.